time now for the award-winning number one local talk show in Northeast Pennsylvania, The Sam LaSant Show. Now here's your host, Sam LaSant. Well, folks, when they took office in 2011, they inherited a $4.2 uh, $4 billion debt. Just imagine, folks, you buy a business and they say, okay, here, we got $4.2 billion, we're in debt, all right? I'm talking about the Corbett administration, and we're going to talk to uh, the Secretary of Revenue today, no stranger to our show, Dan Muser. $4.2 billion worth of debt, folks, was inherited by the Corbett administration, and in the last four years, get a load of this, folks, not one tax increase whatsoever. Uh, and, uh, in fact, they reduced taxes by, by $1 billion. That's pretty darn good, Daniel. It is. Our yeah. metrics are, are, are very good. Yeah. So well, appreciate being here. We hear, um, Dan, that, um, and, and again, whether you're a Democrat or Republican doesn't make any difference. I have to deal, we deal with facts here, okay? We deal with numbers and, and what we did for the state of Pennsylvania. Um, we hear that you guys really didn't inherit $4.2 billion. I mean, uh, what kind of nonsense is this? Well, you know, I've, I've come to start saying that the numbers are the reality after the rhetoric, uh, and uh, we do have the facts on our side. That's, that's Governor Corbett, that's Tom Corbett. He is about the facts, he's about doing the right thing, and um, we are about fact over fiction. I mean, it's very clear, when we came in the two previous years, the uh, revenues were overestimated uh, by $4.3 billion. Uh, the the um, amount of spending exceeded revenues by $4.3 billion the two previous years we came in. We walked into $4.3 billion of debt. Um, uh, fortunately, that first year, uh, we did have a surplus, so-called surplus, if you can call, um, it, we exceeded revenues by $600 million. Uh, so that brought it down to 3.7, but that's what the governor had to deal with in, 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 the, first, in the first year. So the, the governor comes in, and I've said this so many times on the show, um, you know, uh, he said he was going to accomplish certain things in his administration, okay? Um, one of them was we didn't have a tax increase, okay? Um, the, one of the concerns that we're hearing now, and it's election year, and you're going to hear a lot of things now, okay? Okay. Um, that the lottery, okay, that the governor is messing with the lottery and uh, uh, wants to sell it, wants to get rid of it, and, and, and a lot of seniors, okay, are, are fearful of this. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> all the governor is concerned with is having the lottery fund meet the demands of older Pennsylvanians now and for the future. That's the governor's goal, right? That's what the governor does. He sets goals, and then we set plans on how to achieve those goals. So how do we go about meeting the increased number of older Pennsylvanians and making sure that the lottery fund is sustained for them? Uh, we considered hiring, basically it was a sales manager, call it a business growth manager. You know very well when you hire a sales manager, you don't give them your business, you don't sell them their business. We were maintaining all authority uh, of the lottery. Uh, selling the lottery is illegal under federal and state laws. Uh, there are certain um, uh, members of the General Assembly and, and elsewhere that continue to say the governor was trying to sell the lottery. Complete, utter nonsense. We were hiring a business growth manager who, by the way, was going to guarantee us, assure us, let's use the word assure, $100 million in added growth each year moving forward cumulatively. It was an excellent plan uh, that unfortunately uh, ran into a lot of, lot of political headwinds and, and some other things. That's now in the past. Uh, we're, what we care most about is delivering for older Pennsylvanians. So we are laying out our own strategic plan using much of what we learned from that process on, on how to assure responsible growth of the lottery uh, to assure that the programs for older Pennsylvanians are sustained for the long term. So, you know, we're big boys. We, uh, we're not pursuing that at, at the moment any longer. We're going to do our best to, um, uh, to grow the lottery uh, organically and internally, but we do not have that assurance that the private firm was going to give us of putting down $200 million, by the way, to assure that those levels of growth uh, would be sustained. It was a very good deal for the for the uh, for for the Commonwealth, but um, you know, we move on. 
uh, so <clears throat> let me uh, uh, get this correctly. Uh, at no time did the governor want to sell the lottery. Absolutely okay. not. So you're going to get a manager in there. You're going to maintain what we're getting right now to help our seniors. However, they were get assuring you that each year you'd get $100 million more. Plus. Mm -hmm. Plus. Okay. So that would, because the needs are growing, as you know, in the state of Pennsylvania. Exponentially. Right. And, and meanwhile, the lottery, by the way, you, you, look, we're, we're, doing, we're doing well with the lottery. But the fact is, you know, again, numbers are the reality after the rhetoric. Uh, the lottery grew last year $6 million. $6 million in net revenue growth with a partnership of this, of this firm, we would have received $100 million in growth. Big difference. I would say, major difference. And it's sad because could you imagine what $94 million could have done you know, for our seniors? But what we gotta do is we regrouped, we, we've got plans moving forward, we're gonna, we're gonna deliver for, for, for the uh, people who play the lottery uh, with some new games, new, new plans, new, new ideas, and we're going to do everything we possibly can to deliver on that lottery fund. Uh, well, I, I, wanted, I wanted to clear it up because I spoke to someone uh, at a doctor's office and she was very upset uh, uh, what the governor, he wants, to, he wants to sell the lottery. And I told her after uh, you, know, you were on the show and I said, I think it was a great deal you know, being a businessman, looking at what kind of return we're gonna get guaranteed uh, and $100 million uh, additional. Was, uh, you know, politics comes into this. There was some smear campaigns. There were some misunderstandings. We're really not um, blaming anyone whom, uh, you know, except those that continue to misrepresent the facts. Uh, but outside of that, look, we need to move on. We need to deliver for the families of Pennsylvania. Staying in the same vein of, of the gambling, uh, the lottery, yeah. well, uh, not as much, the casino money, okay? Um, and I've said this uh, for years, I had asked for, you know, where's the money going, et cetera, et cetera, and I would get all kind of nonsense. The only, the only person ever to come on the show to give me the real facts was you, okay? You came on and, and gave me real facts and no rhetoric and no nonsense. Uh, and, and, and I appreciate that because I think the seniors uh, deserve that. Where are we at with the casino money right now? <clears throat> well, uh, casinos throughout the, the Northeast are, uh, have, re have some reduced uh, revenues and reduced profits over the last year. Probably uh, most people have seen that in the news. It, it's still a sustaining business. Um, uh, Pennsylvania casinos are, are, are doing fine. And I will say that the revenues that come in are highly taxed. We, we have the highest tax levels uh, in the neighborhood of 65% for, for slots and 16% for table gains. And all of those dollars are well accounted for and go towards uh, a number of areas, primarily to property tax relief. And much of it also goes to the property tax and rent and rebate program that we administer through, through the lottery. Uh, I, I think everyone knows Governor Corbett well enough. Our governor is not a gaming governor. He is not interested in expanding gaming. He's going to abide by the current laws that exist. And w when it comes to the lottery, which is something separate, he does want us to simply grow in a highly responsible way so we can deliver for the lottery fund and the, as we increase um, uh, that much more rapidly for older Pennsylvanians. Um, but we, uh, we're, we're, gonna, um, uh, we're just going to m maintain the, uh, and, and, and operate within the um, gaming laws that, that exist. Uh, uh, our governor is not for video poker and things of that nature. Um, and um, we're going to continue just to assure that we're, we're collecting all the dollars that are due from the casinos and sending it where, where it should go. Unfortunately, much of the, the idea behind gaming was oversold yes. to, to the general public. Yes. People thought it was gonna bring all kinds of property tax relief. Yep. That was well before we came into office. Yep. They overpromised and underdelivered in a big way. Uh, we try to do things oppositely. We try to underpromise and overdeliver. Uh, when you're looking at your budget at 29.4 billion, okay, and you're, you're, this is what you need, there, there has to be revenues coming in. And I'm sure when you put this budget together, you have already planned where the revenue is coming in to meet this particular budget, correct? Absolutely, sure. Uh, folks, I'm talking to our Secretary of Revenue and State of Pennsylvania, Dan Muser. Uh, all I can tell you, folks, if you've watched our shows in the last four years, 
Uh, every time uh, Dan Muser was on here, he speaks truth, he speaks facts, uh, no rhetoric, no political nonsense. And I tell you folks, we're in a mess today because politics plays a picture. Yes, we know politics has to be involved, but when it gets to the point where it's destroying some of the growth that we could have in the state of Pennsylvania, it's a little upsetting. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back to the Sam LaSanne Show, folks. Remember, 24-7, uh, ssptv.com. You can watch any, oh, all of our 21 shows that we produce. Yeah, 21 shows, folks. And remember, uh, Comcast, uh, for those people uh, on the greater Pottsville Comcast system, we're on Comcast Cable 190 now. Uh, and welcome to all of the new viewers we're getting on Service Electric Cable Vision. We're close to over 170,000 people. Uh, and we appreciate that. My email, sam at ssptv.com. Any questions, any comments, please feel free to email me. My guest today, Secretary of Revenue Dan Muser, talking about uh, what's happening in the state, particularly the budget. The budget is $29.4 billion. Remember, they inherited $4.2 billion in debt. The last four years, no tax, with tax increase at all. In fact, it was reduced. Um, the Citizens Voice have um, the, their headline, Muser, Jobs and States, Private Sector on the Rise. Uh, when you spoke to the Chambers of Commerce um, uh, the other day, um, you talked about the uh, private sector. And I think this is, uh, again, concerning because, as we know, jobs create a lot of revenue. Yep. Uh, wh what did you mean by that? Well, the governor has said for years now, let's let the results speak for themselves. Now that we're in a more of a political year, we, we, we're going to be doing more, more speaking for, for ourselves. But the numbers as a result of the work that's been done are good. We have 6.9% uh, unemployment, the lowest in, in five years. We've got 150,000 additional uh, private sector jobs. Revenues are up $2.3 billion. Through this year, they'll be up $3.2 billion. And business taxes and taxes on, on family farms and family businesses are down $1.1 billion. Those are some, some remarkable, I said metrics before, those are some remarkable measurements for a state uh, uh, these days coming out of what was a pretty severe recession. And fortunately, the results are, are now, being, now being seen. Job creation. Um, personal income tax revenues go up. Uh, more businesses are, are moving into the state. Uh, the, the, we look at the data, and the data is showing that Pennsylvania is moving in the right direction. When you're looking at the job sector, okay, and, and you, you're comparing them, uh, because these numbers are surprising to me, because the economy in general sucks, okay, across the country. Right. Um, and um, the comparison between Harrisburg and Washington, you... you um, tell the story of the tale of the two cities. Uh, why don't you share that story with us? Well, it truly is a tale of two cities. One, one city is going in one direction, and Harrisburg is, is, is going in another, in every area. Let's, let's take a balanced budget. We did balance our budget. We came in with a $4.2 billion deficit. We continue to have escalating costs, such as the federal government. If we would have gone, the, and yet we have a balanced budget. If we would have gone the, the path of the federal government, our budget deficit today would be $90 billion. Uh, take taxes. The government has added $1 trillion, or federal government has added $1 trillion to, uh, uh, of new taxes. We've reduced our taxes by a $1 billion. Our revenues have gone up. Our revenues are now above where they were in 08, 09. The federal government's revenues, even with a trillion dollar increase, still have not gotten to the 08, 09 level. Education funding. Um, we're focused on it with, with accountability. I don't know, where, where's the federal government on it? A lot of rhetoric. Um, uh, regulatory reforms. I mean, uh, Department of Revenue, for instance, our regulatory reforms have just given us a grade improvement. Uh, the Council on State Taxation just raised our grade for tax administration from a D to an A minus for the, for the Pennsylvania Department of Revenue. I don't know, what sort of grade would you give the IRS these days? And then, there's, and then there's energy reform, transportation funding. We just passed a big transportation bill. Are we seeing anything good coming out of Washington, coming, coming out of the White House for transportation? I don't think so. And even on, on the, what the governor's healthy PA, which is, which is certainly a version of the Affordable Care Act, 
uh, but, but brings accountability, brings affordability, makes people have co-pays that can't afford it, and makes sure that the, that the people who cannot afford it receive health care. We're bringing accountability and, and truly what I think people want to see in government. You know, it's, it's, um, it's a difficult task sometimes, Dan, when, the, when the, the electorate is not fully informed, okay? It's the sound bites, it's the spin, uh, and uh, how people could be, you know, it's like, uh, well, let's take a, a Republican district, okay? Well, a Democrat will never win there, a Republican's gonna win, so Democrat, the Democrat district. Instead of looking at, well, who's running? What is, what's the background? What, what, what do they bring to the table? You know, uh, are they like, uh, again, I'm not promoting Lou Barletta, but Congressman Barletta has been down there fighting from day one uh, of, with a different, for a balanced budget, you know, the Obamacare and all the things that you're yeah. talking about. He's fighting for that, okay, mm -hmm. along with uh, Molino and, and uh, is it, uh, Molino, uh, Matt Marino, Tom Marino. Yeah, Tom. Uh, these guys are there fighting for no this question. stuff, okay? And Pat Toomey and, yeah. and many, many other good, yeah. good people. Uh, but when you, you have uh, the, the chief executive and a, uh, a, a, a Senate that either wants to keep things w where they are or, or just, just handle things in the manner that they think is best for people as opposed to giving people what they need to live, live their own lives independently. It's different, different outlooks. It, it is, and it, it's, it's sad because when you're looking at, well, you're talking facts. I mean, you're not just making these numbers up. You never, I never knew you to make numbers up, okay? Uh, what, what do you see right now? Um, uh, the, what are we facing in the state of Pennsylvania today that uh, something that we should be concerned about? Well, we, we, we really need to drive uh, personal income growth and employment. We are, we are at a 6.9%, that, that's good. 150,000 new private sector jobs, that's good. Um, it's a good start, and the governor knows that. And the programs that we initiated are the right ones, are making Pennsylvania more competitive versus other states, uh, truly a competitor among states, a competitor among nations. Uh, that's just as important. The governor engages in trade missions, and he, he is about delivering not about going on trade missions. The results are, are truly what matter. So that's a big, big part of it. Um, uh, moving forward, executing the, the plan uh, to create an environment where the private sector can grow and flourish. And then there's education. You know, the nonsense that the governor cut education, yeah. mm -hmm. it continues to just be an outrage and is a high level of misrepresentation by many. I mean, when President Obama came up to Scranton and he said the governor made brutal cuts to, uh, to education, absolute, total farce, fiction, misrepresentation. Our governor has added well over a billion dollars to our education budget. The only thing, state taxpayer dollars are a billion dollars higher today than when they were uh, when Governor Corbett took office. The only thing that disappeared were the stimulus dollars, the federal stimulus dollars that were used by the previous administration and the school districts were supposedly told these were supposed to be one-time dollars and those stimulus dollars were taken away by the federal government leaving a huge hole that Governor Corbett had to fill. Um, and, and that's the truth of the matter. If anybody cut education, it was, it was the federal government. It's interesting because here again, I hear the same thing you hear when I have some guest on and saying, well, you know, the governor cut education and I'm saying, wait a minute. You know, Representative Toohill sitting here and saying, well, look, we, we gave more money now than they ever had. Okay, the stimulus money came in, okay, as a, as like, here's a gift, all right? It's, it's like someone giving you, uh, you know, $10,000. For, for quote unquote shovel ready projects. Yes. And it was their prerogative to use it for education. It was supposed to be clear, but the money disappeared as Governor Corbett came in, as well as at the time we had a $4.2 billion deficit. So we needed to make up $500 million right there. And, and, and the governor since then has added another billion dollars. This year alone, $377 million and added, added funding for, for education, but with accountability. We say it all the time, make them accountable. Folks, I'm talking to Secret, uh, Secretary of Revenue, Dan Muser. Um, all we can say, folks, is we're talking facts here, and facts sometimes can be ugly things. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back to the Sam LaSanne Show. Folks, my guest, Secretary of Revenue, Dan Muser, 
We're talking about the budget, $29.4 billion in the last four years, not one tax increase. In fact, $1 billion uh, reduced in taxes. Um, job creation is developing, as the governor said. Um, in looking at transportation, okay, um, how did this whole thing evolve, you know, with the, the, uh, where the money's going to go and why it's so critical to the state of Pennsylvania? Well, the governor recognized that we had a big problem in the Commonwealth. The Motor License Fund, which we oversee at the Department of Revenue, pays for all of our transportation needs, our infrastructure needs, with some funding from the federal government. He sees that the Motor License Fund is declining. Uh, we're going up in general fund revenues. The Motor License Fund is declining. It's, there's more cars on the road, but they, they're getting more, uh, more, more miles. They're, they're, they're far more efficient. Um, when, when, when a state like ours only uses we're one of only two states, maybe three, but I think it's two, that only use the motor license fund to pay for our infrastructure and our road improvements and safety and, and, and modernization. Uh, so the only place you could go to is the motor license fund, the oil company franchise tax and, and registration fees. Or we could have tax increases and start drawing from the general fund, which other states have done. But we choose instead to look at it more of a, of a, use, a use fee the more you drive, the, the more you would pay. Our problem is that we have set our, our, um, the threshold for gasoline prices where they're being taxed at $1.25. That was set back in 1992. That, that, that does not, is not allowing an increase in funding to, to pay for our roads in a, in a thorough manner. So what the governor has proposed, thought about this for two years, along with Barry Shook, the uh, Secretary of Transportation, and many good people in the General Assembly, is to simply let that threshold on the oil company franchise tax rise, 60 cents a year over, for the next three years. Yes, that, that increases taxes by somewhere in the neighborhood of, of, of nine cents on the oil company distributors. Now, some of that may get passed along, I'm not gonna deny that, but usually when somebody gets a price increase like that, they push some down, they eat some, and they pass some along. But it is the only way, anybody who drove to work today or yesterday or knows the need of, 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 our, of our road improvement, and we simply did not have the funding, the money is not available. Uh, so the governor felt that this was the best way. Um, I absolutely agree with him. And it, it, will deliver, it will deliver over time and added $2 billion to the motor license fund all earmarked for infrastructure needs, and it will create thousands and thousands yeah. of jobs, yeah. Yeah. Uh, all kinds of new construction projects, mm -hmm. and, and it's about safety. Mm -hmm. the, the, governor, the governor feels public safety is, is his number one job, and this, this is a real safety issue, and it was the best place uh, to receive the funding. Now, Dan, I want to ask you a personal question, okay? Um, I always judge people by their character, and I think if people went and voted for people on character instead of uh, being a Democrat, Republican, we would be in much better shape. Uh, I know Governor Corbett a little bit different than you do, okay? You had a, you, you had a successful business. It didn't happen overnight. Uh, you ran for Congress, and you were well-respected when you ran for Congress. Um, he looked at you and said, well, you know, I think Dan Muser can make a, a great Secretary of Revenue, which I feel you, you are doing outstandingly. Uh, and I'm not patronizing, I'm just telling you the truth. Um, when you look at Tom Corbett as a person and the, the, the values that he has and what he wants to do for the state of Pennsylvania, what, what, how do you, you know, someone says, what, what's, what, what kind of guys is Tom Corbett? I admire him immensely. He takes a long view of things. Uh, he's not worried about the politics. He's, he's worrying about the results. Um, he faces reality. Uh, there's, there's, no, there's no smoke and mirrors. Um, we, uh, it, it's, a, it's about doing the right thing. It's about facts, and it's about making decisions that are, that are in the best interest of the most uh, Pennsylvania families as possible. Um, uh, he's, uh, he, he's a very honest, good man. Anybody who knows him knows that. Well. The, the reason I say that, this is an election year, and I'm not endorsing anybody, but I just know, you know, and we may have great people on the other side running, uh, you know, uh, against the governor. Uh, but I think sometimes people should look at what a person is all about and the character of that person. 
because, you know, like you said, he's not that kind of person. There'll be a lot of things I think they're going to try to come out, you know, just to discredit the governor. And Tom's a sort of a straight, narrow guy. I used to say in business, an informed customer would be our best customer at, at Pride Mobility. Frankly, an informed uh, voter will, will vote for Tom Corbett. And there's, there's, unfortunately, there's a lot of information out there that's, that's wrong. That's, um, that's, that's, that's misrepresentation. You were just telling me about a, an article that I won't mention the paper. You were telling me you saw an article in the paper, okay, and that it was 70% wrong, all right? Now, this is the kind of stuff that, you know, people, uh, it's just sad, okay? And whether it was against you or for you, if it was the other way around, it's still not right, okay? How do you, how does the, how do you react to things like that when you see the blatant lies? Well, we've got the facts on our side. We have a very good record at this point, one that we are very pleased with. A lot's been accomplished. Our governor was, was voted into office in an overwhelming fashion. And the commitments he made then are the promises he has kept. He has kept his promises on what he was going to do, and that's where we are right now. And we're going to spend uh, as much uh, energy as we, as we can outside of our work um, uh, uh, getting that word out. I can't, it, it, and that's the thing I keep saying. Here's a guy who said, vote for me for governor because I want to do this, 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 and this, and this. And people said, okay, and they voted for him, and 90% or better of what he said he was going to do, he has accomplished. That's right. I, it, 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 it drives me crazy. I mean, well, here again, we, it just drives me crazy. The guy said, I'm going to do this, and you said, yes, okay, and you voted for him. Now, if he didn't do that, it's a whole different ballgame. Agreed. Well, uh, Dan, it's always a pleasure having you on the show. One thing about you, you, you tell it the way it is, and it's factual, and I appreciate that very much, and I'm sure the, the viewers appreciate that. Uh, folks, you could always go to the website and see what's going on in the state of Pennsylvania. I've said this many times, folks. Look at the mess we are in, because people are telling you how to vote. Don't vote straight Republican. Don't vote straight Democrat, unless they're qualified people, okay? This nonsense, well, he'll, he'll win in the Democrat, this, because they're all Democrats down there. Doesn't make difference to me, folks. That's why we have the mess in, in Washington that we have, okay? And if you think it's going to get better, wait till Obamacare really starts taking off. You're going to really see the problems you're going to have. We'll see you next time.